Hey everyone, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I think we have an exciting little program today. We have a, a lot of requests recently for the McDSP APB hardware software combo package for a video on that or a fresh video on that. So by gosh, that's what we're going to do. And uh, I've been interested in that piece uh, myself. What I have here is I have a song which uh, is currently part of our Rate My Mix competition. It's a fun song. It's kind of a modern country song with a rock edge, uh, great singing, great lyrics. Just everything about it is awesome. So what I want to do is I want to play you where we're starting from. So what I did is I opened up the song and kind of left the plugins on individual tracks. But if you know anything about my mixing style, I'm hitting some subgroups and a stereo bus, and, and that's where some big part of the sonics come from there as far as kind of analog saturation, uh, compression, that kind of a thing. So this is a perfect spot for me. I thought I would wipe what I had on the stereo bus, wipe what I had on the inserts of the group masters, and we could start inserting the plugins from the APB um, across there and kind of see what it does. Let me hit play and let you see where we're starting from. Right now, there's nothing except this trim plug-in because if I activate this uh, limiter, it's going to get loud and I'll clip our recording device. So uh, here we go. The world don't need another love song to me. The love songs don't come true. The world don't need another love song. And I don't need another life for you. All right, so we're going to have some fun. So what I think we should do real quick is familiarize you guys with the APB concept. Most of us know McDSP as a software manufacturer. Uh, and they're one of the best. We all know this. I've been using them for uh, since the founding of the company just about 25 years ago. But what they've done recently is they, they've made a hardware box with its own conversion. 16, you can get it in an 8-channel or a 16-channel configuration. Super high-end conversion and analog components inside of this box. So we take, we see a plug-in and we see that we can control it, but it's routed via Thunderbolt into this box, converted to analog, goes through a series of op amps, uh, capacitors, VCA circuits, and comes out the other side sounding more analog than, than digital can emulate. At least that's the goal. What we're going to try to do here is uh, see if we agree with that. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, what I have is the APB-16, which means I can do eight uh, subgroups um, you know, or eight instances of on stereo tracks. But you can do 16 mono or some combination thereof, right? You can do the math. Let's just start with the drums. I'm going to mute everything. I'm going to bring up the newest plugin in their bundle, and it's in its factory default setting. And what this is, I, we're, obviously, we're not going to have time to walk through every plugin and every knob. You know, this isn't really meant to do that. It's kind of kind of be um, just as as somebody that really hasn't used it before, what it's like getting started. And does it truly fill that gap between software and all this glorious hardware that you see around me? Because there's times where I patch this in because I, I do feel like there's a thing. I love plugins. That This is not me saying you aren't capable of an incredible mix using nothing but plugins. I mix in the box all the time. But that said, sometimes there's a little bit of a grit, a little bit of a weight that I know I can get out of some of this stuff and I'll patch it in and print th something through it or use it on, uh, you know, a stereo bus, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, so I, I still have a, a real love for analogs. So let's see if we can get there. So here's the drums and bass together. And we're going to take it out of bypass. And you can see it was already adding some drive, totally wet to the high frequency area. So you see these silver buttons in the in the middle? That's uh, mostly focused on high frequency, low frequency, or full range. In this case, it's drums. I want full spectrum. And we're going to take our, let's unlink these and turn our dry up and our wet down. You know, let's put the wet, let's, let's, let's do half and half for now. Because what I want to do is I want to kind of just hear the drive circuit. Okay, this is a good time to, say, to uh, let you know that this kinetics knob here, that kind of controls the analog character of the breakup. So, for example, we go one direction and it's, um, you know, like it, it still has the breakup, but it's not like taxing the circuit quite as much. Uh, I think it's easier to just show you 
because uh, I heard it on a, I watched, yes, I watched a product video uh, before I went live. So let's, <laughs> let's check it out. So we go counterclockwise to the left over here, and it has a lot of dynamic, right? If we go over here, it's like the circuit is being really taxed and clamped down on, and the dynamics are kind of gone. There's probably more technical terms than that, but what I want to do is I want to just start in the middle. And you'll see right under that, I will tell you there's a focus area where we have a frequency, a single frequency that we can select in like a bell, bell filter. And this is our amount uh, of boost that we can apply to focus a little more grit. For example, Let's say we were using this on a snare drum. Uh, I can see real value in focusing a, a little extra grit, grit around 3K or 6K or something uh, where the snare drum is providing some, some, some attack. So that is what that will do. But let's leave it in its default setting. Let's just add just a couple dB uh, of that, not very much. And let's start dialing in our sound. So we're going to add this much dry and let's start adding. Well, first of all, let's make sure our dry is the same before and after, okay? All right, there we go. Now let's start adding the process signal into it. Okay, so now what we'll do, I, I kind of like that amount. So let's link them together and then just turn the whole thing down until we really don't have a, a volume difference. Okay, I can already tell I want the kinetics to come back over here a little more lively, a little more jumpy on something like drums. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do it before and after. and Let's focus on how sterile or unsterile the snare drum sounds. So I'm hearing analog flavor, absolutely. I'm hearing a grit on the attack that's kind of causing some form of consistency and leveling, but I'm also hearing a, an enhanced sustain. So check that out. Listen for those things here. Okay, that's probably a little too much wet because I just want... a. You know, I, I want to hear it, but I don't want to overdo it. Okay, so one more time here. Okay, now before and after. Well, now I uh, I took too much of it away. Let's let's, let's split the difference there. Okay, let's start there. All right, so what I would do typically on my uh, order of events on a drum fader is I would do my, you know, if I was using a plugin, for example, I would do an analog saturation, which we just did. I would usually use an emulation, whereas we just used real analog circuitry, which is pretty cool. All right, so what I would do next is I would bring in a fast compressor, something that's capable of a uh, very fast release. I think the chicken head, um, from what I read, is the one that's most. Uh, fitting of that that bill. So let's take the attack. Let's go, let's see. So its slowest setting is 25 milliseconds. So let's go there. Let's go release about 100. Okay, that's the release, ratio four to one. That's perfect. So let's just start dialing this guy in, okay? Now let's add a little of that gain that we lost. Oh, wow. Uh, massive difference. Um, before and after, listen. This is why I use uh, compression on the entire drum and bass bus. Uh, I, I want a slower attack that lets everything sound urgent and important, but I want a fast release so every, all the sustain comes up, and it's just more gooder all the way around. All right, so check this out. Okay, perfect. Now, one thing that I saw is this sauce button. To me, it was almost, they didn't say this, but it's almost like, you know, some transformers, like a, an iron transformer we, or steel, we can put that in and it adds a low frequency bump. 
And I feel like that's what this was emulating, um, even though that's not what they said. But it's, it's definitely a low-frequency thing. Let's check that out, because drums and bass, right? You know, let's see if the kick and the, and the bass get a little cooler. Even the low end of the snare drum, even the low end of the snare drum is getting a little more uh, cooler. So let's do this. I'm going to fly over here to the individual channels. I'm going to turn the bass down just a little now. That's usually all the compression I want on the drum bus, enough to, to make everything together, enough to make, you know, the, like I said, the important things sound more important, a little increased sustain. Uh, it only takes, a, a, really a dB is about all it takes for me. Okay, now I don't think it needs a whole lot, but we're trying to get to know this box. And so let's add a little EQ. So let's go down here to make DSP and let's add the Royal Q. One thing I need to say is that, um, these are not, as you can tell by looking, they, they are inspired by certain things, but they're not a copy of anything. This kind of looks like a massive passive, right? The last thing kind of looked like an Altec, but that's not what they are. That's not the point. Um, it's just, you know, the designers of the GUIs and, and, and whatnot having a, having a good time. Um, so that's good to know. So what we want to do, let's bring this in. Let's link it because it's a stereo thing. Let's turn the top uh, band to shelf and the bottom band to shelf. Let's go up to about 70 dB or so on the bottom. Let's go up to around 10 or 12. Let's go to 12 on the drums. Why not? And let's add just a little EQ, a little, little air to the cymbals and the snare drum, a little, little boop punch in the bottom of the kick drum, a little boop. Okay, <laughs> let's see what we got here. Let me use way too much and go down to about 10 just to make sure everybody can really hear this. I know not everybody's frequency response is uh, the same. So even at 8 dB of gain there, I'm not really hearing that those harsh artifacts. So it kind of reminds me of a of a of a you know a high end tube compressor, but so let's let's go to um, ten eleven thousand cycles. Add like two dB. Why not? And on the bottom, let's see what we got here. Wow, that that is bringing the thunder. One more time, just so everybody has a a good idea of the flavor. That's a nice bottom end. I really like that. So let's keep it about 2 dB. And we may have to adjust the levels of our kick and bass guitar just a little bit, but I think it's more important that we get this flavor hitting our buses. Yeah, let, let's take the kick, the kick down just a little bit. Okay, so now what we we, we have three plugins. Uh, which is uh, six channels of the 16-channel unit taken up. All right, so let's do this. Let's take and bypass them all, and then I'll add them in, and we'll hear how much better we've made it. But remember, the point is not only how much better we've made it, because we can do that with plugins too. Let's see if that little bit of analog mojo of like a circuit, you know, an actual analog circuit being driven, you know, is happening. Because that's a lot of times when I'm using this stuff, that's what I'm doing. If I use that blue stripe or, the, or that revision F right there, most of the time I'm driving signal into it pretty heavy uh, or out of it pretty heavy because I'm, I'm looking to really get that color. Otherwise, just use a plug-in if you just want vanilla. Um, but, but you know, the reason to buy a box like this is for, for color. Let's see what we got, okay? Let's do that one more time. I know everybody needs probably just a little more time to focus their thoughts. Here we go. Okay, that definitely sounds not only better, but that sounds analog to me. I hear a gluing. You know that 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 analog compression is, and saturation is capable of. All you know, it, it, the drum set sounded a little bit. I know that's just one dB 
of compression. But the drum sounded a little bit like individual elements. You could, could probably hear that. The snare drum was kind of pointy and, and not really part of the kit. And com- the KD-1 drive combined with the chicken head compressor, to me, is giving that, that sound that I would expect out of running something through uh, something like a, you know an SSL uh, compressor across the drums or that uh, EMI uh, audioscape style thing over there. All right, so let's check out the guitar. So we're gonna mute the drums, drag the KD-1 drive over, but let's do this. Put it in this factory default setting and bypass it so we're not getting, because we, we know that just having it on even without touching anything, affects the sound. And now um, I learned my lesson. So let's try this. So we're going to listen to the guitar blend, which is electrics and acoustics, um, played by two of my best friends um, here in town, Joel Key on acoustics and Jeff King on electric. And um, they're just superstar studio players here in Nashville. Here we go. Okay, cool. So let's do this. Let's put the drive on or the kinetic drive in. And this time, instead of just dialing in by hand, let's take time because I'm not afraid when I get a new piece of gear, I'm not ashamed or afraid to just go look at the presets that somebody like uh, Colin at McDSP comes up with and see what they had in mind. Okay, edgy. Let's just do it. Let's just go. Let's go with it. All right. So bypass and then let's insert it. Okay, massive volume boost difference. Let's let's uh, kind of negate that a little bit. I like that. Okay, so that's quite a bit of drive. Kinetics, as you can see, are fully uh, counterclockwise, meaning it's lively, it's energetic. The the circuit is not over saturating to the point where everything is just leveled off, which. I wouldn't want that on, on this on this because I you know I want the peaks of the banjo and the acoustic to still have some life. Uh, the focus is pretty high; it's set to about 550, uh, five dB, and we you know we're using a lot of wet. So um, that sounded great. I love that. One of the things that I like to do on guitar bus and groups is tie them together with compression. Not really for the sake of compression very much though. It's more for the sake of using something like a variable mu tube compressor that has some zing into in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this newest uh, compressor they have here. I think this is the newest one called the Royal Mu. And the reason I'm using that is because um, it also has a little high frequency boost. So we can get a little bit of EQ out of it uh, at, at, at the same time as getting some you know analog style saturation plus compression. Now, what I like to do is, well, let's just see. Let's go into presets here. And let's do present and accounted for. Why not? And we're monitoring gain reduction. Let's see here. Let's turn the gain down. I'm afraid it's going to be really, really loud. And uh, let's turn the EQ off for now. But let's leave everything else the same. And 250 on the attack and the release, 250. Okay, that, that sounds like it would work for me. So let's check this out. It's a soft two to one ratio. Okay, that's about all the compression I'd want on it. Uh, a variable mu, uh, some variable mu's have a way of making, uh, limiting dynamic range, but at the same time making things more um, present and lively. I don't know how they do it. it. It sounds more energetic, even though it's less dynamic. And that's one of the magics of these, uh, of these pieces. So now let's add a little high frequency EQ in there. I don't think that's actually 6 dB of, of EQ boost. I, the, the, um, I don't feel like it's 6 dB unless it's some, maybe it's modeled on something like a Pultec, you know, a passive design that's so sweet that you can really go uh, heavy handed. So maybe that's what's going on. So let's check that uh, before and after. I like that. I like the acoustic. The, see, the acoustic guitar transients are still very much there, even though we're getting some analog mojo on top of it. So let's do this. Let's put the drums and the bass in with the guitars. Let's bypass the treatment and then unbypass it and see if the guitars um, come to life. Okay, check it out.
Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's do that one more time. Now, let's check one spot. There's a, an electric guitar solo, very short solo piece up here on this EG3. Uh, let's kind of see. What I like to do um, is I like to be... I like at that those moments when something within the guitar group gets really hot to get up to about two dB of compression, uh, and that's all I really want. So let's see if we're in that sweet spot. Yeah, we absolutely are. So what I want to do is I want to bypass it one more time and hear the guitar solo moment with APB and without APB. Here we go. Okay, cool. I, I, there's no denying the fact that this KD-1 is having an effect. I'm hearing extra grit. Uh, in fact, I, I feel like I want to unlink those and turn that down just a, just a little bit, even though I'm really liking it. And then the, the, the compression is doing a good job of taking the high, you know, the, the bite of the electric guitar, leaving it pronounced and prominent, but somehow smoothing it out, putting it in the track just a little bit. That's what I'm, the kind of things that I'm looking for when I, when I do this kind of treatment. All right. So that's, let's see, what is that? That's five instances of uh, APB. Um, so we still have three stereo instances left. Um, actually, no, because I've got this limiter on uh, already. And that's why the trim is here. So make sure we don't kill it our recording device. All right, so let's go to the vocals real quick and let's just tie something together with compression. So what I would like to do here is a lot, one of my favorite tools is again, variable mu style compression. And they have this piece right here that I know for a fact is while it's not modeled on a Fairchild, it takes that idea, uh, which is a different sound of a variable mu compressor than, than what the um, Royal Mu was. So Fairchild's, first of all, there's, quite a bit of time constant, op more than the original unit here has, which is, is cool. So we're going to have more attack and release uh, options, which is, which is great. So let's, let's try something to, to kind of lock this uh, vocal in place a little bit and have a, a, a smooth release that doesn't take away the punch of the remain, you know, the words that follow it. So let's check it out. Girl, don't need another love song. Too many love songs don't come true. Well, that right there don't. Uh, that don't hurt my feelings. So let's we're we're getting about two dB of compression. So let's make sure we're, we're uh, our output is turned up. Our makeup gain is turned up a little bit. Girl, don't need another love song. Too many love songs don't come true. The world don't need another love song. And I, I, I like that a lot. I'm gonna leave it right there. Uh, about about 400 milliseconds of release. Uh, you know what? Let's try just a little faster just to see what we were getting into. Girl, don't need another love song. Too many love songs. Okay, now let's hear that in the track and see if that punch is good or if we need to set it back just a little bit with a slower release. Girl, don't need another love song. Too many love songs don't come true. The world don't need another love song. I think four is really a great number for this. So let's listen to the vocal group with and without this compressor. That to me is undeniably better. Um, it was a little, the backgrounds and the lead are tied together a little bit more. Obviously, we're, that, that, that little bit of dynamic range reduction is doing a good job of setting it down in there. Uh, but also, did you notice there's a little bit more sheen on it? So one thing about a Fairchild. On a Fairchild, if, if you've ever used one uh, or a good one, um, when you pass something through it, there's a little extra zing on the other end. I don't know if it's a frequency response. I guess it would be a frequency response thing, but uh, harmonic content that that seems like frequency response, it's just got a little extra life, a little edge, a little air on it. And I feel like I'm getting that. What that could mean is that we don't have to put any EQ at all after the vocals. Maybe they're bright enough already. So let's. I'm going to play it one more time just so you can kind of hear it with those you know topics in mind. Girl, don't need another love song. Too many love songs don't come true. Don't need another love song. Too many love songs don't come true. 
I like it. I like it. That's uh, that's going to be my starting spot for that. Now, let's move over to the stereo bus and let's do uh, something else. Let's do, um, gosh, there's so many choices here. Let's do the Moo, Moo Tube Comp. Yeah, why not? Okay, so when I think of a tube compressor, uh, well, it depends. There's various kinds, but um, let's see if this means warmth. Let's see if we get a little extra like tube bloom on the bottom end, maybe a calming effect on the top end. Um, I don't know. It could be the opposite. You know, some tube compressors actually add, like a Fairchild, add some zing. Uh, but let's just let's just go to presets here. Final touch? Sure, why not? And our attack is at 20 milliseconds. Recovery is at 642, and um, let's turn our output uh, makeup gain off for now because I don't want added volume, and let's just dial this thing in. Okay, let's do before and after. Okay, exactly. So we get some of that tube bloom, right? The bottom end seems more full. It almost has the effect of running through it like a pull tech. And the top end is tamer. I don't know if it's just one of those things or if it's a combination of those two, but um, I can see where on a track, um, like if I hadn't been driving so much bass uh, on the drum and uh, the drum group, um, that this could be a really nice compressor for a more subdued type of song but I don't think it is the compressor for this song. So let's go in to something else. Uh, definitely analog sounding though. I mean, there's no uh, no denying that whatsoever. Let's do the Royal Mew. And the reason is because it has that little extra high frequency boost that we could use if we want to. Okay, so what we will do is we're gonna monitor gain reduction. We're gonna turn that gain uh, boost off. And, oh, they're using the bias. Like I said, I don't wanna talk about every knob. But I remember seeing a video where they talked about this. And if the bias is on and turned to this side, the base, uh, the bottom end is allowed to roam um, a little more freely. Um, whereas you can go the other way and it's more mid-range focused. So um, you can just check this out, but it's, um, it's a powerful tool. Uh, that's for sure. Um, let's leave the EQ out for now. And let's just dial in the amount of compression. Looks like 250. Um, well, 2.5 uh, milliseconds attack, about 60 milliseconds release. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be aggressive. So let, let's just hear it in action. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, so let, let's let's try that one more time. It's definitely doing the analog glue thing that I'm wanting to hear. It's 100% doing it. But what I want to do is I want this song to breathe a little bit more than this preset is doing. So let's slow down our attack to, I don't know. Let, well, you know what? Let's do a real common pre, uh, number for a lot of us. Let's do 10 milliseconds. I get it. This isn't a VCA piece. This is something different. But let's still use some of these familiar numbers and see what we come up with. Let's use 100. Okay. So 10 millisecond attack. Uh, 100 millisecond release. Uh, let's see how punchy it is now, okay? Okay, now let's hear just the compression circuit before and after. I want just a little bit heavier hand compared, just a touch. Just not because it needs it, just because I want to hear it. Okay, so that now we should uh, have 2 dB of makeup gain to take away or to add to the 2 dB, 2 dB that we just lost. So here before and after. Cool, cool. I like that. Now let's add the saturation 
add some high frequency EQ because remember this is kind of a soft uh, Pultec style passive sounding circuit to me on the top end. So let's add like I don't know four dB, five dB. Why, why not? Because it seemed like I said, it seemed soft. Let's try it. Little too much because I, I you know I have so much high frequency added with the kinetic drive and things like that. There's so much aggression up there. Let's turn that down to about two, three dB. Okay. That's pretty good, guys. I, I like that. So let's do this. Let's take all instances of of APB off of our buses and our stereo bus. So let's see how much difference, not just in processing, because we can get great processing from uh, plugins, but let's see if we hear not only that, but here's some analog mojo on, uh, you know, as a whole. Okay, check, check this out. I'm gonna do it one more time before I tell you what I'm hearing. So when I do choose to go through my external hardware on stereo buses or on individual tracks, it's for two things. Grit, uh, I mean, just pure and simple, just angst and grit. And the other is for weight, you know, going to tubes and real transformers just have this, just, this fullness to them. I'm undeniably hearing that personally. Uh, I, you probably are too. I don't know how we could uh, say otherwise. So, um, I'm definitely hearing the analog effect that they, that they're going for. Okay. So now what we can do is I'm going to turn on, now this is going to get really loud, but they've got a limiter here. Let's hear this limiter in action, okay? Turn my control room monitors down. That's a little too smashed. Let's play with the knee a little bit. I, I feel like I like the liveliness of the knee on this side. And one cool thing about this limiter, it's got a color right here that we can engage that also adds some EQ. So for example, let's say we took the EQ circuit out of the Royal uh, Mew here and added it on the L1. Check this out. I think that's really cool. So if we think our mix is a little bright, a little dull, even at the very last stage, we, we have a knob here that will kind of kind of do that for us. So anyway, guys, that is just a brief summary uh, of what this thing is capable of. There's several plugins we didn't even touch on. But I, I think the question that most of you had is, does this thing sound analog? Uh, and I'll let you form your own opinions. I, I, I know I've got mine now. I actually do feel like I hear, no doubt, like the the the, the circuitry over here, the, the op amps being toasty, getting nice and hot and being overdriven. Uh, and I personally like that. That's when I choose for um, external hardware. But I'll let you guys form your own opinion. Be sure to comment below and let us know uh, what you guys think. But um, I think it's a really cool box. Now, listen, it it's expensive, uh, you know, but here's the thing. When you think about it, you're getting eight, let's say we were, we were buying eight high end pieces of stereo bus treatment, uh, stereo group treatment. So we were buying the pieces and the interfaces to do the conversion in and out and the cables, right? Think of how many thousands of dollars that would cost. Here we get the, it's, it's like the interface and the converters and the, and the hardware is all bundled into that one price. So it's expensive, but at the same time, it, it's a bargain, you know, in, in that sense. So there's kind of different ways to look at it, but um, nonetheless, it's an extremely interesting thing. If there's anything we can count on from the friends, our friends over at DSP and Colin McDowell, 
it's interesting. <laughs> so, and he accomplished it. I, I, I'm a fan. I, I actually really like it. So anyway, have a great day. Happy mixing, friends. <laughs>